It's been a bit since we've gone on a field trip, so I figured I'd bring you all to my latest project here on Dickerson Pike in East Nashville. It's actually not far from where my office building is. I mean, we're literally, what, 60 seconds away from the office and almost across the street from my boutique hotel called Salt Ranch, which we are beginning construction on in the next few months. And that's one of the reasons why we decided to do this project. It's called US 41, which is a nod towards the Dickerson Pike Highway. So let's check it out. So one thing that I like to do when I'm investing in real estate is to get a critical mass in a specific area. I get to create my own activity, right? So a lot of people try to buy real estate that already has something else going on next door. But if I buy this property and then I buy the property across the street and then I buy something else up the street and I get in there and actually actively make it better myself, then I'm the only one that gets to benefit. Now, of course, all of my neighbors will, but I'm actively making myself benefit from all of the development and updates that we're doing on the corridor. So that was actually how we decided to move forward on this project after we closed on the hotel. My buddy, Keith, actually owns 2809 Dickerson. So we've been leasing that building for a while. We're standing here on 2801. And he reached out to me when these two properties hit the market and said, hey, what if we put this project together and did something really cool and unique here. And with my office up in the area, I knew that there's not a lot of restaurants and there's no bars. There's almost nothing to go to. So every time the team and I go out for our team lunch on Tuesdays, we have to drive all the way to Five Points in East Nashville. It takes about five or 10 minutes for us to get to where we're going instead of just being able to go across the street or even walk to something. You can see that blue for sale sign down over there that is actually 13 acres that the Cobble Group, my commercial real estate brokerage, has listed for sale. We're set to close on that on November 1st with a developer out of Carolina that has a lot of experience doing thousands of multifamily apartment units. They've announced over 300 units right there. So imagine that, 300 apartment units directly across the street from a site that's going to be all restaurants and retail uh, and bars. I mean, it's you couldn't have a more ideal situation. Not to mention the fact that it's walkable from the neighborhood that's all the way on this side of the street. Further down, you've got my hotel. On the other side of that, we've actually got the 147 unit Skyliner apartment complex that is now under roof. And behind the hotel is 81 cottages that were built in 2017 that they don't have anywhere to walk and eat. So that's exactly what US 41 is going to provide. We think that there's a lack of community parks in the area. So this site is actually going to be only 18% building covered. So instead of buying the site, which is 2.3 acres and absolutely maximizing it out with the building density, we got such a good price on the land that we're actually going to minimize the building density and create a unique atmosphere for our tenants through all of the common area spaces. So we're gonna have a dog park, we're gonna have a playground. We're actually gonna have an event lawn and stage right here uh, for concerts and festivals that we're planning on throwing at this site. So that's kind of US 41 in a nutshell. So right here where we're standing is going to be the future home of the wash at US 41. That is actually the second iteration of a project that I did over in, uh, in East Nashville on Gallatin. We're bringing micro restaurants to the space. We actually released that to our waiting list. After we did the, the wash originally, we had a waiting list of over 27 restaurants that didn't get to make it. So we had five restaurants that got a lease and 27 more that were on the waiting list. And we released it to them already. We've got three executed LOIs, fully executed with non-refundable deposits already in place. And we haven't even closed on the final piece of this property yet. We just closed on this uh, this past week. We're closing on the middle piece uh, in November, early November. So as I said, we've got the wash here over there back at that house. That house is actually zoned commercial. We're aiming to have a wine or bodega style tenant there. We're looking to create this campus where you kind of want to come spend all day, spend three, four or five hours hanging out with your friends, maybe bring your dog, bring your kids. Cause again, it's, it's basically a community park that just so happens to have restaurants and bars and retail for you to hang out at and enjoy. Yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be a really cool project. It's one of my favorites. We've actually got more money in the budget for landscaping on this project than we've ever done for anything. So like I said, we're sitting on 2.3 acres. We've got about $300,000 in the budget just for landscaping because to us, the outdoor amenities are everything for this project. And 
we're looking at that a little bit differently than most developers do, right? I mean, it's not always just about maximizing out a site, getting the most leasable square footage. You can actually maximize your investment opportunity by taking care of the common areas and providing something that the neighborhood doesn't have. So, you know, that's a big thing. When I say 18% building coverage, that means we're only covering 18% of the land with buildings. All of this that you're seeing right here, this building is gonna stay, that building's gonna stay. We're standing where the stage and the event lawn will be. Everything else is gonna remain open. So we're gonna have all sorts of walking paths and landscaping and playgrounds. We'll actually have a pole barn over there so that we'll have some covered outdoor dining uh, that could also be heated in the winters. So really kind of promoting this, this community feel with this project. You can see right here, the environmental work is being done. So they've come out and spray painted where all of the underground tanks are. That's one of the fun things about doing projects like this, especially on emerging corridors, you're gonna have some environmental issues to deal with. Fortunately, we've been there and done that before. It's not that big of a deal. So we just hire the right consultants and my team and I get to work. You know, either we're gonna pull these tanks out of the ground and then we'll have to make sure that they didn't leak. If they leaked, we'll have to get in there and uh, actually dig out a lot of that soil and remove that because of the chemicals. Uh, if they didn't leak, we'll be able to just fill them in place, pump that gas out, fill them with concrete in place, and leave them there. So a lot of people freak out about environmental issues. It's really not that big of a deal if you know what you're doing and you have the right consultants. Back over here, we're going for a brewery or a cafe type of tenant. We'll actually go inside this building. It's really cool. It's been there for a while. I love the step ups. We're actually gonna have some plants kind of hanging over. So the, the ethos behind US 41, you know, Dickerson Pike was booming in the 1960s, 1950s, 1960s. It was the highway to go from Nashville all the way to Chicago until 1965 when Interstate 65, I-65 was developed and all of the traffic stopped coming down this corridor, which ended up choking a lot of the businesses here. So it kind of fell into disrepair. And we are bringing back the nostalgia of that 1960s highway feel through our design. So we're going with this core 10, you know, intentionally patinaed type of project where everything's gonna look as if it was built in 1960 and just left. I'm calling it kind of like a modern post-apocalyptic, but manicured and it looks and it looks good. But you know, the buildings will be rusty, the the signage will be rusty, the the landscaping will be overgrown but manicured, I'm giving it this really unique kind of feel that no other project in Nashville frankly has. We're really excited about it. We're gonna be using construction materials that you don't typically see being utilized for projects like this, such as using rebar for coating the exterior of the building. Usually rebar is used just for uh, securing and stabilizing concrete when you're pouring it, but it's actually a great, really cool looking construction material. So we're gonna be doing a lot of value engineering and cool things like that. We might actually be using some scaffolding to hang up some hammocks and kind of leave it like that, you know, half completed, but you know, again, manicured kind of look. So here we are uh, in what we're calling the flex building. Uh, it's flex because it is flexible in what its use is. And uh, like I said, we're going for kind of a brewery, a cafe, maybe a coffee shop, uh, coffee house type of feel here because you've got these vaulted ceilings, you've got these, you know, block walls, these giant openings where they actually used to drive trucks through because this used to be a mechanic shop. And so we'll probably, bring uh, we'll probably bring back glass garage doors, really make it lit up and light in here, and uh, possibly even add in a little mezzanine um, up top. One other thing that was very important for us when we were putting this project together was keeping all of the cars out of uh, the areas that were designed for people. A lot of developments, especially in the South, in cities, not just developments, entire cities have been built around cars and not people. And so it was very important to me when we were doing this project to design it and develop it around people, not cars. So we've actually relegated all of our parking. You'll see on the site plan, all of our parking is kind of to the side or to the very back of the project. And that is intentional so that people have to park farther away, they walk in, and you don't sit there and look at a parking lot. I mean, when you're standing over there, you'll actually see this building and the pole barn and the event lawn and the diner and the outdoor dining that we're gonna have there. And all of these amazing things that you wanna look at instead of a parking lot. So that was pretty important to us. 
as I said, this will become a diner. We're really excited about that one, kind of going for that 1950s, 1960s retro diner vibe. They have rusty neon signs up front, again, as if it was developed in the 1960s and just kind of left. Uh, we'll have some outdoor dining for them as well. And uh, hopefully it'll be open 24 seven. We're obviously looking for an operator for that. I do not have any restaurant experience, nor do I want to open a restaurant. So this is the final piece over here. This is the one that Keith already owns. This is a creative way for you to structure a deal. If you are trying to figure out how to put together your first development deal, Keith and I have been friends for a while. He already owned this building. So instead of having to raise the capital and get the debt to buy the building from him, he actually is just contributing it into the development and he's joining us as a general partner. So it makes the capital raise a lot easier. We don't have to raise, you know, this building is probably valued at 1.4 million. We don't have to go out and raise the debt and equity for this specific piece. We just need to pay off the note and we can kind of wrap that into our existing loan. One of the other things that is pretty exciting about this piece is there's already tenants in place. So typically on our developments, we don't have any tenants involved because we like to find stuff that's completely vacant like this. You know, it, get, it gives us a blank canvas with which we can come out here and develop these properties. Since this one's kind of isolated over here, we're, we actually are just gonna keep the tenants. So it's bringing in about six or $7,000 a month. So think about that, that'll help us carry the note while we're under construction, which is pretty significant when you're talking about, you know, nine, 12 months. I mean, that could be 70 to $100,000 worth of carry uh, that just these existing tenants will be able to bring. Obviously banks love that right because they want to know how you're going to how you're going to carry the project how you're going to cover all the costs while you're going through it there's a bit of a grade change here as you can see so we're going to have to level this out just a little bit we'll probably have some steps coming in um, obviously we're gonna, it's going to create some ada accessibility issues so we're going to have to add in some ramps to make sure that the site is fully accessible to everybody and uh, back over here we're actually going to be tearing that back building down it doesn't really contribute much. It's structurally unstable. So we're just gonna tear that down, add a little more patio space over here, and then uh, add some parking. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's that's US 41 in a nutshell. We are, uh, this was of course a, a, a syndication, right? Almost all of my deals are syndications. We go out and we raise the capital from friends and family investors. And so far we've got about I'd say 10 or 12 investors involved. Uh, we haven't finalized our capital raise as of the date that we are filming this, uh, but we're expecting to do that in the next 30 days, close on our construction loan and we'll get going. Total project cost is gonna be right around $7 million, give or take. So certainly not a big project and it helps that we're just renovating the buildings instead of tearing everything down and building something new because again, on 2.3 acres, uh, you, could, you could end up spending a lot more money than we are. But yeah, if you're interested in joining us on investments like this, go to investwithhamilton.com. You can actually schedule a time there to speak with me directly about joining us on our projects. We'd love to have that conversation with you.